for me personally, I really like shooting uh, or seeing people shoot a really high score. Um, but I do understand uh, that something needs to maybe change. Time now for semi-final number two, and it's straight On down to the shooting line. So Tanya Galantine of Denmark up against Sara Lopez of Colombia. They've met six times previously with Lopez taking five wins from six. And in fact, Galantine last beat Lopez in uh, the stage in Antalya in 2017, winning that one 149 to 147. So incredible scores way back in 2017. But this is an important match for Tanya Galantine. She's either got to win this one and if she doesn't, she's got to win the bronze medal playoff to qualify for Hermosillo. Lopez has done it through ranking. But for sure, she's going to want to put her stamp back on the compound women's division with a win. Yeah, like with uh, Ella, Sarah hasn't necessarily shown um, all of her potential this season so far. Um, although um, the same goes for Sarah, that she has kind of grown into the season a bit and uh, after a bit of a rough start um, has progressed and, and gotten well, a little better throughout the season um, on the flip side of that um, yes it's five to one for Sarah uh, Tanya has been shooting um, a couple uh, domestic USA tournaments where she's done really well um, she's broadened her horizon a bit uh, when it comes to shooting also shooting some 3D tournaments, some field, so some different stuff, um, which I think personally is good um, for an athlete. Um, and Sarah is not as, uh, you know, unbeatable. She's not as a, as much of a threat as she was back when Tanya and Sarah used to meet a lot. Yeah, it's uh, certainly, and you talk about domestic, we were talk you said domestic, and then you talked about shooting in the US, and well, hold on a minute, she's uh, shooting for Denmark, but of course she's married to Braden Galantine, who um, has retired as of his uh, performances here in Paris, I'm sure watching in the stands, uh, his wife now taking on the baton uh, and shooting in the final fours. Will that have a little play in her mind, or has she been prepared for this for quite some time? Well, uh, obviously they knew that uh, he was going to retire after this tournament, um, so I suppose that she has had the time to give this a place in her, uh, you know, psyche. Well, both of them looking on. Try it, it, this moment between ends is where they they've got to kind of almost tune out of uh, the pressure and the intense pressure of uh, shooting arrow by arrow against their opponents. So one point lead for the Dane. And Lopez will shoot first in the second end. Another thing to keep in mind here, um, and I'm, I'm not trying to throw shade to any archer, but um, most of the times that Sarah and Tanya uh, met were before uh, Tanya had ever won a World Cup. And I feel like uh, in 2021, she kind of flicked a switch. Um, and I remember her, I think it was Guatemala where she uh, won the, the World Cup. Um, and it was just like, it was such a good performance and it was very, uh, impressive in the, like the, the manner in which she did it um, I think ever since then whenever you see her shoot in tournaments um, it's a lot more convincing it's a, like it looks a lot more solid um, even though she has been around for a very long time uh, on the international circuit I feel like um, after the pandemic is just when she kind of thrived in, uh, in archery. 
Well, both going perfect in uh, end number two. She, she does have a slightly longer hold at full draw than, well, I mean, everyone has a slightly longer hold at full draw than Sara Lopez, but she doesn't seem rattled at all by the speed at which Lopez is shooting. No, like I said, she, she has been around for some time, and, uh, well, this is the, what is it, seventh time that she faces Sara Lopez, so she must be used to the rhythm of Sara as well, and, um, well, just experienced enough to uh, uh, to be able to deal with it and her husband is a fairly quick shooter as well so maybe they shoot it all together and uh, she gets used to it that way yeah not bad having a practice partner living in the same house to take a look back at uh, Tanya Gelantine Smile on the nod, knowing that she's done it. And number three, still a point difference. Uh, Lopez trailing Galantine, so it'll be the Colombian to shoot first. Yeah, we saw in the last match that in some cases, uh, just a single nine can be too many uh, to still have a chance in a match. Although, I don't remember Tanya shooting very many um, perfect 150s compared to the others that we've seen out on the field so far today. Um, although obviously I would love to see another 150. That would just make it a very impressive semi-final uh, pair. Movement there from uh, Galantine. She holds on for the 10, and that was a nervy shot because of the second drop point from uh, Sara Lopez, and Galantine knew that. Yeah, I think Galantine knew, and uh, well, she also she has been uh, like pretty shaky throughout the whole match, but this one seemed just a little bit more shaky. Um, I think in her advantage in this case is that, well, like I said, she's typically quite shaky when she's uh, in full draw, so she's probably used to that little bit of movement in her side picture and uh, knows how to fix that. Well, two drop points from Lopez through the first three ends. And you have to now fancy Galantine not only to go through to the gold medal match here, but uh, with it book her place at the finals in Hermosillo as we get a good look at uh, Galantine at full draw. When you talk about pushing and pulling at, uh, at full draw, you very much see that at the end of Galantine's shot. Yeah, and especially in compound archer, archery, there is a different approaches. So sometimes people will just pull, so they will just... Um, not actively push their bow but just hold their arm stretched out and then only pull through the shot um, in recurve archery it's more common to push and pull have kind of have like a 50 50 division um, it seems like tanya is uh, pushing as well as pulling even though she's shooting a compound bow so this is all lopez can do now just put it into the tens to try and apply some pressure on galantine and again it's not like one of the archers is shooting uh, really badly and therefore the match is going one way it's just that they're both shooting really well um, Tanya is just shooting exceptionally well That one might have bounced out, or at least I think she should check her knock of the first arrow. Oh, 
Tiny little bit more composed in that one. She knew that that nine had been shot again by Lopez, but she just seemed to control that one and contain that one a little bit better and remains perfect. Sarah Lopez, I think, probably knows that this one's gone. I mean, you always say it's never over until it's over, but a three-point deficit going into the last three arrows. She's looking for a bit of a miracle here. Yeah, I think we can say this match is very one-sided. Um, and something would need to happen to Tanya if Sarah still wants to have a shot at this. She's on a mission, isn't she? She, she, she knows what she has to do. Yeah, and, and maybe she got a bit inspired by that uh, perfect 150 by Ella in the previous, but um, in any case, she's shooting, uh, she's shooting the lights out. She's shooting really, really, really well. <laughs> We've got one a hell of a gold medal match coming up if this continues as it's going. Lopez will shoot first, and all she's got to do is put it into the 10. Simple to say, of course. But then there is Braden Galantine looking on, now retired. Leaves a big hole in the compound men's division. But here, supporting his wife. Nine. Big adjustment there from uh, Sara Lopez with uh, nine number four of the match. As Galantine continues to march on, two away from a perfect 150 for her. And with that, the perfect goes. So, a fairly comfortable arrow by the standard she set. Finishes with a couple of nines. Uh, just to prove that she is fallible, but a 148 uh, for. Tanya Gelantine applauded by her husband Braden in the stands and she'll go through to the gold medal match where she'll face Ella Gibson. Was that a case of, kind of she knew it was kind of done and just perhaps stepped off the concentration a little bit? Uh, I think that it was just mostly the pressure for the perfect 150 on the finals venue was building um, and then when she shot that second arrow into the nine ring, uh, the last arrow, like the pressure just dropped and she, uh, well, the last arrow didn't really uh, matter for that 150 anymore and she knew that the seven would be enough to win. I think that's kind of what was going on, um, but it's always guesswork from where yeah. we're sitting.